Thinking back on my review of Kart Fighter, I realized that it's a pretty rare type of game to find on the family computer and Nintendo Entertainment System. As a matter of fact, the only other fighting games I can think of for it are Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighter, which was actually released the same year as Kart Fighter, and uh, Karate Champ, a game that is often passed off and shunned by the Nintendo community as one of the worst games for the system, although I can definitely think of games that are much worse than this. So today I've decided to take a look at Kart Fighter and give it a proper review and a proper piece of my mind. In 1984, Technos Japan developed an arcade game called Karate Do, which was released by Data East in Japan. The game involved the player fighting opponents one by one in a one-on-one -on -one fashion using a unique two-joystick control system. The game was released by Data East USA in the United States, renamed as Karate Champ, and eventually garnered success, probably because the Karate Kid came out that same year. So Technos developed a two-player version that was also released by Data East the same year. Eventually, Data East would publish a port of the game for the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1986, and the rest is history. So let's review the NES version of Karate Champ. In the game, you must challenge another player or the computer through karate matches consisting of a series of rounds and nine picturesque settings to become the karate champ. How do you do this? By kicking their ass, that's what. Just deftly execute the kicks and punches at your command and you should be on your way in no time. Two points win a round and two rounds out of three win a match. One round lasts 30 seconds, or until one player gets two points. Whoever scores two points first, or has the most points by the end of the 30 seconds, wins the round. After each round, the winner gets to take place in a bonus round, where objects fly at them for them to destroy for bonus points. I would be showing you some footage of it instead of you seeing me in the flesh here right now, but... Yeah, I wasn't able to get a sufficient amount of footage for the bonus round because it's just so damn hard. And I'm not playing the game a million times just to show you me beating the bonus stage. So anyway, moving on. In the one player game, if you lose in a match against the computer, it's game over. However, in the two player game, you just keep playing until something happens. I don't know what it is though because I never got to play with another person. Now, let's touch upon the main thing I wanted to cover in this review, the criticisms of the many people who hate this game. One of the biggest problems everyone seems to have with this game is the controls. I understand where they're coming from, but the controls don't really hurt the game that much for me. Actually, they work very well for this game. I'll explain. The D-pad is for moving your character, while the B and A buttons are used for attacking. The B button makes you attack to the left. A button attacks to your right. This is of course meant to arcade the controls introduced in the arcade version, but instead of two buttons you use a second joystick. Like I said earlier, it was a two joystick setup. The left joystick controlled your character's movement and the right joystick att used for attacking. Now of course, the as you can see, the Nintendo controller only has two buttons on the right side. So Data East made it so that for certain attacks, you actually had to push both buttons at the same time in order to compensate. And I love how they were able to pull this off, because it works pretty well for this game. The problem, however, is most people assume you just have to press the button to execute the move. That's not how it works. In this game, you actually have to hold down the button because the move must go through an animation. If the button isn't held down by the end of the animation, the move will cancel out. 
This may seem flawed, but it actually kind of works. You can actually execute another move just after the animation for the move you just did finishes, but just before your character returns to his neutral stance. You can even cancel out a move you pull off by accident by letting go of the buttons and then executing a different move. This makes for a different strategy that adds to the fun. The only other major problem people have with the game is that your character doesn't automatically face your opponent at all times. I do understand that Konami fixed this issue with ER Kung Fu in 1985, a year before the NES version of Karate Champ, but Data East made the controls so that you can attack in either direction no matter which direction your character is facing, so this isn't an issue. Either way, there is a move you can actually use to turn yourself back around. Just push right and B if you're facing right, or left and A if you're facing left and you'll be turned around. So this really isn't much of an issue. Checkmate, haters! So what do I think of Karate Champ for the Nintendo? Well, I gotta say, it definitely deserves a lot more love than it gets. The controls may seem complicated at first, but master them and you'll have just as much fun with them as I did. It definitely makes for a unique experience that's even more fun with a friend. If you're new to the game, Pick up a copy and play it, even with what other people say. And if you have played this game before and you didn't like it, dust it off and give it another chance. You, you just have to understand the game. It's definitely a lot more fun than people give it credit for. But either way, who am I, a 14-year-old boy, just to say that? But either way, thank you everyone for watching. I am Andrew Ambrose, and I will catch you later. <laughs>